So here we are, um, zoomed in on the background because we're going to start by painting the background area first. So I've got my tray, my palette right in front of me. I'm just going to wet the brush a little bit. I started with a wide round brush and to do my sunset, some of my paints are, hard, are harder than the others and it's just a matter of how long they've been sitting in the tube. So long as you can make it pliable, you can use it. You can also freeze acrylic paint once it's on a palette like this and then thaw it later. And that will give you more longevity out of how long you can actually use that paint. So I'm just thinning the paint with water and I'm going to make a tint of this red with the white paint over here. I'm just going to move it into one of my free trays right here, the free areas on my palette, to create a tint of the red. And we're just going to start blocking in the color right on the canvas. And it's easiest to blend paint when it's still wet. So while it's still wet, we're going to create some dark areas and some light areas. And again, we don't want the white of the canvas to show through. We want it opaque enough that the white areas are filled in, blocked in with color. You can see the gradation between the dark and the light. And that's precisely what a sunset is. It's going to have different tones of color. I mean, sunsets can come in pink or red and orange and yellow. They can be so many different things. The real challenge is just to create the blending properly. So block in the color thin the paint with water wherever you feel the need and use your wide brush to begin and just block in that nice thick opaque color blending it as you go along you notice how I only paint with the tip of my brush I'm not pushing down like this. That's not really how brushes are supposed to be used. You're supposed to really paint with the tip of a brush. So just the ends are being used as they're meant to be. So I've got a nice primary red color and then I've got the secondary color of orange, which I've made pre-made by mixing the red and yellow together to create an orange. And when the orange goes in, I don't want it to be this fluorescent. So I'm going to blend it with the red to make it more of an orange red, which would actually be a tertiary color. And so the red is still wet, so it's being pulled in with the orange. And then I'm going to create a tint of the orange to create a light area. You see how the white created a light orange as we're blending on the canvas. And we're just going to go up with it right into the red. It doesn't matter at all. And we're going to come over into the pink zone to create a new tone of pink, which will be a pink-orange mix. And as long as it blends properly together, it's just going to... When I talk about blending, what I mean is it's not going to have a harsh um, joint. It's going to 
merge two colors so that the lines are less defined. I'm getting to the point where I need a little bit of water. When I add a bit of water, I tend to um, wipe my brush against the side of the drawer to remove excess water because we don't necessarily need the paint to run all over the canvas. It just needs to be wet enough to work it. Now my original painting that I'm using as an example, I created some darker, cool colors, if you remember. And so in order to do that, I need to pull them out of the canvas right now. And the one way I'm going to do it is with some burnt sienna. Because then instead of getting a pure primary blue, it's going to be a different tone of, of blue that is more neutralized when you put the two together. Another way you can create more of a neutralized color is by adding gray or by using the complementary color on your color wheel. So I'm going to put that dark tone up here and then I'm going to add my warm tone with the dark tone which is automatically coming out of the colors that were in my brush because I deliberately didn't clean off my brush. I wanted that to mix. So you can see it's given me a different tone of red and that's what we're looking for are some light and dark areas. And I'm just going to bring it right across. I want it to look a little bit cooler so I'm going to go back to my palette and add some more blue. You can see up close and that's a bluer hue tone. And I'm going to put that up here. You get a choice you can make. You can do a warm sunset without mixing the cool color at all because most sunsets are not going to have that. In my painting, because I was creating a mood, as we talked about at the beginning, I decided to have that element. But your painting that you submit might not do that. You might just want to stick to blending your warm colors. And if you like to blend them on the canvas more than mixing them directly on your palette, you can do a little bit of it, but you're going to need to also use your cam, your palette at one point and also some of the blending on the canvas. So right now I'm taking my secondary color and my primary color and I'm creating a tertiary color of yellow-orange. And the reason I want to do that is I find this, se this secondary color of orange is quite strong. I want it to be a little bit quieter. So I'm going to use that tertiary color right in here. And you can see the different colors that are already on the canvas. And that's helping me create a blending motion as I go along here. I'm going to use a tint now. So I'm going to take some pure white add it right to my yellow orange to create a new tone of paler yellow orange. So I'm going to apply that right here and blend it with the color that's already pre-existing. And I want to have quite a bit more yellow in my sky. So I'm going to take some of that nice primary yellow now. I'm going to bring it right to the canvas. It's going to already have some of my orange because I haven't cleaned my brush out yet. And that's just going to be fine for doing a sunset because 
you want to have those different rich hues working together and mixing together. So we're going to blend this up here because it looked, a, the lines were a little too harsh. So that's what you're doing with your brush. You're just going back and forth and you're breaking down those harsh lines into softer lines. That's really what blending is all about. And you're making new tones everywhere you move because as it blends, it will pull some of the color around it and that's really how your sunset's going to jump out. Now if I really want to create a nice focal point in that sunset, I'll add some really pure white, but then instead of leaving it as white, I'll blend it in with the yellow so that it becomes a really pale yellow. And by doing that, maybe that's where the sun is still peeking through a little bit. Some of the rays haven't quite faded. And then I'm taking back some of the area with my secondary color of orange. I'm blending it here. Back and forth motion. And I'm going to add some red again and I'm going to go back in and go back across the top. I'm going to mix it with some orange on my palette. And I'm just going back and forth pulling out the other colors, the surrounding area. At this point I need a little bit more water. I'm going to clean my brush right out by um, banging it against the bottom of the jar and then I'm going to actually squeeze out the water and I'm going to just carry on like this for a little while. So as you can see we're coming right along with this piece. We're just going to keep working in the sky. You may have chosen to do a night sky instead of a sunset. If you did, you're going to just skip forward to the point where we did water because the water will be in the same fashion. Although I'm going to recommend the sunset over the night sky because it will give you more experience with blending warm colors and cool colors will probably find their way in if you do anything to do with a landscape or anything to do with outdoor scenic work because there's so many cool colors in nature. I mean, look at all the greens and the water is always a blue-green. So we're going to keep with the sky. This shows you a bit too much water on my brush. It's not going to matter in the scope of this painting because we're just going to cover that up but you wouldn't want that to have happened if this was a different media. We're going to add a bit more yellow to that to make it more yellow orange. We're going to bring my strokes broadly across. You notice where my rider is. I'm doing a wash behind him. I'm loosely going around the edges, not necessarily where he is, but I definitely want to be able to see through those pencil marks. So do your wash light enough that you can still see him when you're coming in with your colors. So I'm adding some more yellow to my palette because I want to do different tones and I want to see some variation in that color. The more light and dark and you get, 
the more it's going to give you some nice blending effects. So just back and forth and where your subject is, you're just washing around him. You're not going to actually um, fill in the area that's going to be coming. There's no real need to do that. Now I want to do a darker tone of orange now to be able to blend the top where it's this dark pinky orange into the lighter orange. So I'm pulling in this paint because it's still wet and you see how nice it blends when it's still wet. But notice that I need to go over it a little bit more to blend the top. So I'm going to do it right on the canvas so you can have a glance at this. See how it pulls in the surrounding color and those lines kind of become more solid blocks of color. You can have as much line as you want for texture, but for the purpose of blending, this is a great exercise to learn your blending techniques. So I'm just pulling in some of the pink off of my palette. I'm going to make a pink orange tone by just going back and forth and even crossing like this. create sort of a peach effect down in the yellow and we want a range of tone in there so we're just blending it because it's nice and wet to do that right now and now we're going to take some of this gorgeous yellow sunset and we're going to take it to the other side of the canvas so I'm just making a little bit thicker opacity as you can see I'm just blending it here on my palette then I'm going to apply it up here now if I find that's too peach all I need to do it's still wet go right back to my palette and decide do I want that more red or do I want it more yellow? I think I'll go with yellow and bring it in, pull it back and forth, change the tone. Now this dries so fast that up here it's starting to dry out already so your your canvas won't be as big as this when you do it and the way, reason I recommended not to do it as big is you're going to want this acrylic paint to be wet while you're blending but if it does dry on you and you get up there and you need to blend those areas just mix up that original color again you need some yellow so pull some yellow and some peach together and go back up there with it now I need some red So I go back to my primary red from my palette. I'm trying to just get a little bit more on my brush by dabbing it in. And I'm just going to pull it in to my mixture of orange until it blends. And it doesn't take much just to light push and pull. Sometimes in the blocking in stage it doesn't make a lot of sense until you get a little further along in the work. So let's get some orange playing into this 
red. And I'm just blocking in that area. The trees I'm going to add after everything's dry, so I just need to fill in all the color that I want to see. Now I've ran out of yellow on my palette, so I have to stop a minute, add some more. If your brush gets too wet, squeeze it out inside your water jar. And you can also take paper towel like this and just hold it down to pick up any that you want to release. So I've just reloaded my palette with yellow because there's quite a bit of yellow in the tones of this painting. And now I'm going to go back in where I've blocked in some light washes of color and I want to turn them a little bit golden hue. To do that I'm using my primary yellow. I'm going to take it, I'm going to mix it with a tint of white And then I'm going to bring that new hue into the painting above. So I'm mixing it up here on my palette till I get the hue I'm looking for. I'm trying to make mine a particular golden shade as opposed to the pure shade. So to do that your palette's going to have some oranges in it. Just pull a little tiny bit of the surrounding color until it turns more of a golden yellow instead of a pure yellow and a tint of yellow because you're going to want some light areas and some dark areas in your sunset. So now we're going to start blending these washes the wider your brush, the better for this exercise because it's going to go a bit faster for you and blending color isn't something you require a, a small detail brush for because this is just a blocked in area of the background. So back and forth, always go in the same direction generally. You can crisscross like this, but if you're painting it sideways, certainly don't switch and go up and down unless it's a new form in that area. So I'm just going to block in around the horse's head, leaving the shape that's going to become media ink. I'm not going over the area I've penciled in in the planning stage of the canvas. And I thought the rider should hold a lasso so I'm just blocking it around that lightly. Doesn't need to be detailed. And go right back up where it's still wet. <clears throat> if you see any areas that you want to fix up because this is the easiest time to do it. You can always go over layers in acrylic painting and make as many corrections as you need to. So just practice, go back and forth, try different shades. What do you like? You'll know when you're getting 
the blending because you won't see any harsh lines. This one up here could be softened a bit. But we can come back to that later because we're still working this canvas over. So I want to bring some of that golden shade into the shade of blocked in of orange so that I create a tertiary yellow orange color. I want to bring it right into my golden zone so that I'm creating a new tone in my sunset. <laughs> 